CFO, who also is quite, uh, he's, uh, let's say he's pertinent or germane on the conference call. He says things that I think are a little unusual, but uh, you use algorithms. You always seem to know, for instance, we use uh, Spotify at restaurants. We all, we're never worried. You always seem to know what we want. How is that possible? Well, uh, it, it's really all down to the team of both editors and uh, the machine learning team that we have at Spotify. And we're looking at more than 16,000 signals every single day as we look at your taste profile and try to rank you the things that you like the most. So I'm glad that, that that's uh, working well in the product. You know, there have been those who thought that podcast was a fad. Well, why would we go back to something that's like talk radio? Um, you're finding it's not. The listening patterns are consistent. Is there real growth in the potential audience, though, as well? Well, the, the growth has been really spectacular for us. And just shy of two years, we've become the second biggest uh, podcasting platform. The types of uh, experiences that we're seeing podcasts are doing is just vastly different than just a normal talk show radio. There, there's literally uh, shows like Serial, which is... Uh, drama that, that's acted out, and there's kids' shows that are now coming, including sort of news, The Daily, uh, being great examples of podcasts that are doing very, very well. Um, your investors, however, may look at the stock today down a bit and also sort of wonder about the long term, which I know you're thinking about. Uh, you know, one question I got from a number of people who've owned the stock for a while is, what about Long-term guidance on your margins, which I think you said was between 30 and 35 percent at some yeah. point. Does that hurt? Does this new effort hurt that long-term guidance on margins? And should they expect perhaps a different, uh, different metric? No, um, we're we're staying steady with our long-term um, margin goal. Um, we never said that there would be a linear path to get there, but I think looking at it in our, our fourth quarter results, you can see that the margin is going up. It's very strong. Our core business is very strong. What we're doing now in 2019, however, is we're investing in more original content on the platform. That will broaden the appeal. It will broaden the engagement, which of, of, of course is a virtuous cycle that then grows the platform and leads to more profitability long term. You know, I'm following you guys pretty closely and liked your company ever since you came public. And one of the things I thought that you guys would do was not to get trapped by the four walls of the spreadsheet. I knew you as a Netflix. The more great content that you add, the more I want to own the stock. I don't really care. Uh, things happen, as uh, Barry McCaffrey said, in terms of the range today. Uh, what, Barry McCarthy, why are you trapping yourself? Why are you not going with something which just says, you know what, we've got a Netflix idea here. Uh, Mr. McCarthy is from Netflix. We understand the more content we add, give us a chance. Don't look at this as a snapshot. If you want to know the key metric, advertising going to premium is what we care about. Yeah. Uh, why, did you re why did you revert to traditional guidance when your company's bigger than that? 
Well, uh, I mean, again, we, we've always struck to be a very transparent company, and we do give a lot of uh, detailed numbers on the guidance, and obviously this is a new business line for us, but I think the way in looking at the potential of the business, it is very much what you said. We are investing in more original content, and we broaden the appeal of the platform, and as we're doing that, uh, we believe, obviously, uh, subscriber acquisition costs will go down, engagement will go up, which increases our long-term opportunity. Uh, we know what Netflix spends a year to acquire content. We like that. It's nothing like what you are. I mean, we're talking 12, 15 billion a year, but can you give us some sense as to what your expectations are in terms of how much you will spend to acquire this original content? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, again, it, it is uh, really right now from a very low base, uh, but I don't think it's unlikely that it is a Netflix type of story, even if, if the magnitude of the numbers won't be the same of us doubling that investment year over year to get more and more content. So you do see yourself doubling potentially how much you're putting towards original content, which would typically come in the form of of, of podcasts, I guess, or of audio as opposed of to audio straight content. music. Yeah, I, I, exactly. We're, we're, we're definitely investing a lot more in getting more original content onto the service, and you should expect that going forward. And, and as long as we're seeing positive engagement numbers on the content we're investing in, you should expect us to keep making those investments. It's funny, I, I uh, like the Apple service revenue stream, and when I saw, and I know this company, the, the big one, you know, Brooklyn Company, so I follow Brooklyn companies and live there. Uh, I was hoping that Apple would make this uh, acquisition. The reason I say that is because it, people don't, unless you listen to these podcasts, they are very millennial. Uh, and they are very much the way people multitask now. Uh, do you see yourself buying all of them that are left so that I know if I want that it, you become synonymous with podcasts? Well, I, I, I don't think we have to buy uh, all of the companies that are in the space. There's a tremendous a lot of these companies. But what we feel very strongly about is we want to be in the game. We want to be the platform that these creators come to and go to. And, and again, as you mentioned, I, I would just say like we're very much focused on being with audio. Um, you know, video is a huge space. It's got the attention of everyone right now. But we think audio being almost two hours of consumption per day is a massive opportunity that no one's really paying attention to. Um, you said you you have line of sight. Sorry, Jamal, four to five hundred million on multiple acquisitions this year, and then you just said that may double. Am I correct? So it could be as much as a billion in 2020. Not not really in terms of just the acquisitions. Okay. What I was talking about was our content investments uh, that we're making. So part part of what you should look at in terms of our going forward forecast is both acquisitions but then it's also our own efforts in investing in creating these shows. We had 14 exclusive shows in the fourth quarter of 2018. We're doubling down on that and we want to grow the number of shows that we have. I am so impressed with the subscribers by region. It's something you originally told me, your company told me that happens. Just going to go 30% North America, Latin America 20%, rest of world 10. You're pretty much, you're a UN here, Europe 40. Well, pod, does podcast, do they fly in every region? Yeah, you'd be surprised. It's growing really, really fast. Uh, take Germany as a great example. Uh, we're already there, the number one uh, player um, of uh, kids shows uh, right now. So you see young consumers are, are going to bed with Spotify and listening to stories uh, in a big, big way. So even the perception in Germany wouldn't be that Spotify is just about music. It's really all about audio already. Okay, well this is important because when I watch Netflix, I never watch it in dubbed. I always watch it. You have to watch the titles to watch Falda. It's a different show than if you listen. Will you translate everybody's great stuff for uh, United States? I think there's definitely that opportunity of taking the shows that's working really well in these different geographies and translating them uh, across the world. What about the car? Do you have a sense as to how many people are listening to you in an automobile? Yeah, I mean, uh, we're doing very, very well in the car. Um, I think the last number that we gave out is that there's more than 50 million of our users who are using Spotify in the car. So it's definitely a big part of our business. And do you, do you have any sense as to the growth of that? Obviously, there's competition in the car in the form certainly of Sirius, which uh, many people know. But even beyond that, some of the others. Is it growing substantially? It is growing really, really substantially. I, I think the, the number one metric that we look at is uh, 
dual platforms. How many of our users are using it on more than one platform? And what we're seeing is that number is increasing dramatically as voice speakers are coming into play, as cars are getting more and more connected. So it's really a big part of our story. Uh, but the other thing that we see is those people are uh, more than twice as engaged as the average user as well. So it is an important part of our overall story. When you look at the competitive landscape, Daniel, obviously you were early. You sort of in the days of piracy, you transformed and really streaming. You've been the leader. But Apple is out there with a product. We don't talk very often about it. Amazon, they're both incredibly deep-pocketed companies. Do you believe if they wanted to that they conceivably could spend enough money to sort of push you out of your leading market position? Well, I mean, uh, these are formidable companies, no, no doubt. Uh, but what I look at is obviously how our business is doing, and we had a phenomenal Q4. Um, the other part that I look at is we're really just focused on audio. That's how we should look at this. There, there's a ton of things that are, these other companies are doing, self-driving cars, what, whatever other businesses they're into. Uh, and I believe in this day and age that you need to be very, very clear with your brand what you are for consumers in order for them to take it up. And the best experience wins, and now we're adding the best content to that as well. And that's now Spotify. I don't know whether you're uh, familiar with Team Zoo's work from Zora, but the subscription economy, it's Describe a great book. He always says, watch churn. Churn shows you loyalty. You've got some of the stickiest churn I've ever seen. Yeah, and it's trending. Um, as you can see, the churn is decelerating. Um, and that's after, awesome. Because we tell people that that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, churn is, is definitely decelerating, which is a very positive metric that we're keeping track of. Uh, and of course, at the same time, you know, you should look at the announcements that we're doing today. That, as I mentioned, it broadens the appeal of Spotify. It increases the engagement. If it increases the engagement, we think it has the opportunity of also lowering churn even further. And how about Google? Huh? Google. Yes, Google is obviously in the same category as I guess all of the uh, other uh, fan companies. Um, it wasn't it wasn't that long ago that you guys went public. I remember it. I don't think you were actually even here at the time. Um, you chose to list as opposed to raise capital. Are you happy with that decision? I am, uh, indeed. Uh, it was obviously a big part, uh, a big decision for us to make, but it felt like the Spotify way of doing it. Uh, it. It wasn't just about doing it for the sake of everyone else doing it. And we've always said that we're a long-term thinking company, and I think we proved that with that move as well. So, what, tell me more, what does the Spotify way then mean? It just means doing it differently or the way you it's need to? It's about being transparent, uh, and it's about, uh, in this case, trying to align the incentives of everyone. And in our case, we didn't need to raise additional capital um, and we wanted a way to provide not just our existing shareholders with liquidity but also our employees and that was a very important part for me of avoiding that traditional lockup process for our employees. Um, well, for the sake of transparency, um, we're very happy to have you but sort of curious as to why you're suddenly communicating in this way. Uh, can we expect to see more of you in a sort of a public setting, articulating some of the things you've just done here, or is this going to kind of be a one-time only and we'll never see you again? No, I, I certainly hope to be uh, available and transparent. That's that's certainly what we want to be um, as a company, and I would encourage uh, both of you or everyone else, by the way, to reach out to me on social platforms, and I'm happy to respond to questions there as well. Uh, but I, I think this is obviously marks a shift in terms of people's perception about what the company is and that then it's very important for us to, to state very clearly why that is and why we're excited about this future. Let me go back to something that I, I wanted to drill down on, uh, sharing stuff, was that this Google, I didn't want Google to be a throwaway. The premium subscribers, our Google Home promotion marked the first ever hardware bundle offering in company history. This worked big for you. Are we going to see Amazon? going to see who else can you do this with? Because to me, this is premium, and premium is the way that I want to judge you. Yeah, I mean, um, we have as a core part of our strategy we call Ubiquity, which is being on all platforms. So we got 500 of these partnerships going, and obviously uh, what we saw was our members were asking for these voice speakers. We saw a clear opportunity to provide that with an amazing experience. We saw that people who were already fans of the Google Assistant wanted to the Spotify experience. So we'd be happy to extend that to Samsung, of course, right. and happy to work Samsung's with other Samsung's core. Because you can do it with infotainment, do it with Harman. 
Of course. Yes. That of would course. work very good. How about us? What do we think in Facebook? Facebook, uh, again, is an exciting company. We have a long uh, relationship with Facebook. If there are opportunities, we'd love to work with them. So you don't mind what happened with Facebook in terms of the world? You are a company driven by morality. You have no problem with Facebook. No, look, I mean, at, at the end of the day, we want to be where our users are. Fair enough. Um, just getting back to some of the financials and things that some of your investors care about, what are your expectations in terms of negotiations with the labels and what's going to actually occur there? Well, uh, our focus, and I believe that's their focus as well, is really about how do we grow the entire music industry. Um, I've said before on our earnings call that the uh, uh, focus for us in this round of negotiations is really about enabling the marketplace. And that's a crucial point because it isn't a point about them losing and us winning or taking a point of, uh, uh, of uh, margin here or there at their expense. It's really about um, getting rid of the inefficiencies that exist in the music industry by creating tools that makes it easier for artists and fans to connect and making it easier for labels to market um, their, their uh, right. you, know, you have access to enormous amounts of data that conceivably would be helpful in terms of where people are listening, how they're listening, and who they're listening exactly. to. Exactly, including the 16,000 data points that we're gathering every single day that builds through taste profile. That's a huge part uh, that we're able to connect these two uh, in a way where it's positive for users and really positive for artists as well. I don't want to be too uh, Bobby Kenny like we just think about now, no, but if we dream things, uh, the stick you are, go back to the churn, I mean, a lot of people looked at, at Netflix at six ninety five. they said, well, it's never going to be anything. Well, I mean, when I see the low churn, I think that one day you could raise prices, that you're a little bit uh, more stickier, and that therefore we should be looking, modeling higher prices down the road. Uh, 14 99 is enough. No, I come on. What do you think? Well, look, I mean, again, um, all I can say right now is we're in this uh, growing the market phase. Uh, we're not in trying to capture all of the profits. All right, David, go take the commercial side, then go to listen to commercials if you're problem with the 14. Hey, look, you I know think what, we got to get into the podcasting business is what I think. Daniel, it was yeah. great that you came on. I hope you come back again, Daniel, Ab, with an Thank unbelievable so company that people have better start understanding because they'll want to own the stock if they do rather than the ridiculous four walls that these analysts are coming with the neutral, with the neutral. Neutral. I'm not neutral. Daniel Eck. All right. Well, coming up, shares of Take-Two Interactive are down sharply this morning. You can